All right, so this video is going to be about uh, different types of energy. But before we can really talk about uh, the different types of energy, we really have to focus on uh, that term right there, energy. What is energy? This is a term that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. You can say, I'm drained of energy. I have no energy. I can't do that because I have no energy. Or I have a ton of energy. Maybe you just got uh, done drinking some coffee or something like that. So what exactly is that term of energy? Well, the way I like to define energy, it's... Uh, it's having the ability to do stuff. Very scientific, yes. And uh, we're talking about stuff here loosely. It's doing something. You have the ability to do something. Okay, and so uh, give me an example. Uh, what if you went bowling, right? Here's a nice bowling ball. Uh, very round. I'm sure it would do very well. Okay, and uh, you throw the bowling ball down the, the alley, right? And so you give it a little bit of speed. It's moving that way. Well, what does this bowling ball have the ability to do? Well, uh, maybe it has the ability to uh, pick up the spare that you left on the previous throw, right? And there you go. There's a nice bowling pin with a stripe on there, okay? So it has the ability to hit, this bowling pin. There you go. That's the stuff that it has the ability to do. So this thing has got energy and it has a specific type of energy. We call it kinetic. Kinetic energy. And we've seen that word before. Basically it just means motion, right? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Okay. Well, let's uh, talk about something a little bit different in terms of energy. What if you had uh, your physics book and you put it on the ground, right? Maybe I should do this in green if it's going to be on the ground. There you go. Okay, green for ground. There we go. And here's some grass. Okay, getting a lot nice artistic. Okay, so here is your uh, physics book. There you go, physics book. And got to get the word on there. Okay, does this thing have any energy? Well, does it have the ability to do anything without you interfering with it? Okay, well, maybe not. Well, what if we then uh, put this physics book on top of a table. Okay, so uh, maybe it's your friend's physics book or something like that. And there we go. Does this physics book have any energy? It's definitely in a different location, right? You have one on the ground and one on top of the table. So does it have the ability to do anything? Well, what if we and tried to do some uh, nice inertia trick and hit the table out from underneath the the physics book. Okay, maybe if you did it quick enough, friction wouldn't be able to act, and so the physics book would just drop. Right, it would drop to the ground, and uh, in this blaze of glory and of energy and all this other stuff. Right, we can make the physics book move by simply taking away the table. So that means that this book has to have some energy. Okay, and it has some energy just because it is up off of the ground. And we call that potential, potential energy. It means it has the potential to do something else. Maybe if the environment changed slightly, it would be able to do this. So it has the potential to fall to the ground. So it's called potential energy. And this particular type of potential energy is associated with gravity because that's actually what is pulling it down. And uh, so there's different types of potential energy that we can have. So what if, we, um, what if we kept the table there? So I'm going to backtrack a little bit and maybe uh, get rid of this line through here. Okay, maybe we keep the table there and uh, do something a little bit different. What if, yep, yeah, fixing the table. There we go. What if uh, instead of hitting the table out, what if we picked the book up? All right, so we pick the book up. So does this location have more or less potential energy than this location down here? Okay, we're going to call this E1 and this E0. Okay, does it have more or less potential energy? Uh, it turns out that it actually has more. Well, more compared to what? Compared to this? Compared to this? What are we talking about? Well, if we drop the book and the table's still there, the only thing it could do is hit the table. If we drop the book and the table wasn't there, then it would hit the ground. So we have this, uh, this location in mind that we're talking about, and that is the top of the table. Where is it going to hit the table? So we're going to call this our reference point. Okay, 
we're going to measure how much energy it has with respect to the ground or with respect to the table. So this location, E1, has more energy than E0, but uh, we're going to call the tabletop our reference point and give E0 the value of having zero energy. Okay, so th there's no energy at the tabletop because it can't fall any farther. Now we know that we could push the table out of the way and then, you know, then our reference point might be the ground and so it can still fall farther. But that, that's the weird thing about potential energy is that potential energy has to have some kind of reference point. Are you going to allow it to fall to the table or are you going to allow it to fall to the ground? Where are you going to put that zero location? So that's a weird thing about potential energy. And we'll discuss more uh, as we get into specific examples. So what about other types of energy? So other types of energy that we have. Turns out energy is not something that is... Uh, uh, cut and dry. There's lots of different types of energy, and they can they can be broken apart into this kinetic and potential energy kind of split. But what are some other things that we have? So there's other things that we have are elastic, elastic potential energy. Okay, elastic potential energy. Why is it potential energy? Because it has to do with energy that you store up or put inside an object because you stretch it or compress it. Okay, so what does that bring to mind? If you stretch or compress and all of a sudden you have some energy, this potential to do something else. Well, that could be a spring or possibly a rubber band. Right, That's ha that has elastic potential energy. Okay, what's uh, something else? So you could also have thermal, thermal energy. And you can probably think of thermal energy uh, pretty easily in terms of what it, it has to do with, and that is uh, your heat or your temperature. Temperature is actually not energy, so I'm not going to write it down. That's your heat. It's how hot something is. Okay, uh, It has to do with the motion of the, of the particles, and that's all I'm really going to say right now is, is are the particles moving really fast or are they moving really slow? If you want more information about thermal energy, you're going to have to take uh, Physics 2 next year. Uh, something else that we have for energy is uh, we also have something called sound energy. All right, sound energy. So by making a sound, uh, you are actually producing energy and having that energy take, taken away from an object uh, or a situation in the form of a wave. And we will eventually talk about sound and waves and all that kind of stuff, so we're going to leave that type of energy to later. We also have electrical energy energy, electrical energy, and that can kind of exist as both potential or kinetic, but it's the energy that you have uh, within an electric circuit, so not necessarily within a battery, that's something a little bit different, but we're talking about the actual electrons flowing through the wire and lighting up a light bulb. Uh, what happens inside a battery would be, let me change the color, would be chemical, chemical energy. And that's the energy that is stored up that could be released if you had a chemical reaction. So there's a chemical reaction inside batteries that allow electrons to be released or have that energy associated with uh, pushing current through a wire. So these are very much related to each other, chemical and electrical energy. Now there's an overall umbrella term that we have for a specific energy in a situation and that is called mechanical, mechanical energy. Okay, mechanical energy. And mechanical energy is actually the sum of a couple of different types of energy. It's your kinetic energy. Okay, now it's just your regular good old-fashioned moving kinetic energy. And then you're going to add to that your potential energy. And I know I just wrote a U. U is actually the letter that is used for potential energy. Okay, why? I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to use PE. Okay, in the higher level of physics, they actually don't use KE for kinetic energy, but we're going to use it. So mechanical energy is just all of your kinetic energy added with all of your potential energy, and it's actually a specific type of potential energy, and it's going to be either gravitational potential or elastic potential. Uh, it's just uh, getting rid of some of the weirder ones like chemical or sound or stuff like that. Okay, so that is our basic types of energy. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them below.